Probably one of the most common questions I get asked from online business owners doing 10K a month or more is how do I hire and put a good team in place so that I can grow my business? And with that said, that's exactly what we're gonna be covering in this video. I'm gonna be laying out for you everything I know about hiring and step-by-step -step how to hire multiple people for your digital marketing agency. Now, with that said, this does apply to more than just digital marketing agencies, but I've designed this video specifically for digital marketing agency owners. So with that said, let's jump right into it. If you don't know who I am, by the way, my name is Billy Wilson. I own a seven-figure digital marketing agency for car dealerships, and we specialize in Facebook and Instagram advertisements, as well as a little bit of YouTube and TikTok on the side. Now, with that said, one thing I wanna say before we jump into this is that it is possible to build an extremely successful business being really good at just one thing, and that is hiring. Just think about that for a second. If you get the right mission and vision in place and you just put the right people in the right places, that is literally the only thing you would actually need to do a successful business. Now, with that said, I probably wouldn't recommend trying to do that, but this goes to show that hiring and putting the right team in place is the single most valuable valuable skill that you can have. So here's everything that I know about it. So before we get into the step-by-step, -step, I wanna walk you guys through some of my biggest hiring tips to deliver as much value as possible right to begin with. And the first one here is become a company that the best employees wanna work for. The best people don't wanna work in an okay company because at the end of the day, your team and your business is simply a combination of the people in your business. And if your business just running on you being the superstar, it's gonna completely fall apart eventually at some point. And the best people you can have around you, the farther your business is going to go. So with that said, something that helps with this is the more efficient and profitable your company is, the more earning potential people have, the better people you can hire. So definitely keep that in mind. Now, now one of the other main important things that you actually have to do before hiring is you need to have a mission that people can get behind. Now, a few examples of this, let's look at SpaceX, for example. Their mission is making humanity multiplanetary. Essentially, go to Mars. Now, just think how insanely and inspiring. It's so simple. It's so easy to understand. And it's something that people can get behind and that motivates people. If you don't have a mission behind your company, what's the mission? Help Billy make money? Like, who wants to get behind a mission like that? In order to treat your employees right and to attract quality talent, you need to have a mission that people can get behind. And so, for example, Microsoft's original vision was a computer on every desk and in every home. And in our company, to give an example of like a smaller mission, is to be the number one marketing agency for car dealerships, indisputably. That's what our mission is. Now, the next one here is try to only hire someone if they are better than you at their role. This way, your company will get bigger and better than yourself. Otherwise, you'll always be the limiting factor. And this has been a super, super helpful measurement for me to know if someone's gonna end up being a good hire. Because I know if I always hire someone better than myself or better than the last person, the company can only get better over time. And this prevents me from making an impulse hire and then I screw up and then they only work with us for a month and then we have to restart completely again from the beginning. It's one of the worst things ever. And it forces you that if you don't find somebody that is good enough yet, it forces you to keep looking. And that's why I really, really love that tip. Now, um, in terms of every time you hire for the same position, you know, once again, challenge yourself to hire someone better than the last. That way you're always improving and always going forward. And so another thing you wanna ask yourself is, are you gonna build a major league championship team or are you gonna build a T-ball team? To be honest, in coaching agency owners, a lot of them, to be honest, have a T-ball team. And I can say in the past, that probably happened to me at times. And you know you have to know the best teams have the best players. And there's also a lot of parallels between a successful sports team and a successful business you can kind of think about. If you've ever played in a successful sports team and you've had that uh, championship mindset, you know what that culture is like, you know how all the players have to come together and connect and all have to be great. You can't just have one superstar and then the rest of the team suck. And so always be thinking, am I building a championship team or am I just building a little t-ball team? Or ask yourself, what does my team actually look like right now? Are they the t-ball team? You know, if, if Mikey gets up to bat, what's gonna happen? <laughs> like, are you gonna be concerned or are you gonna actually be super confident they're gonna hit home run? Next here, I just wanna say, personally, I only hire full-time employees. To be honest, you won't get far with a ragtag team of misfits. Now, with that said, sometimes it does make sense to start off with part-time employees. I did that in the past, although I would still say it's not ideal. The reason you ideally want full-time employees is because you get full buy-in. They can focus all of their energy and their focus on your business specifically. And that is what allows people and gets people on the same page and working in the same direction. If you have somebody doing part-time this job and part-time another job and part-time this, your business is not their main focus. And that's a problem. 
because your business will not go as far that way. So that's why I only hire full-time employees. And now one of the last main tips here is to align your goals with your employees. You always wanna set up a win-win and that way they'll be motivated to help the company win. They'll be winning as well in some way. You can't be selfish and expect people will just help you get rich. And here's the deeper thing behind it. A win-win is not just paying your employees. Income and compensation is not the sole reason people decide to work for a company. For some people it is, but for a majority of people, it's actually fulfillment, growth, learning, and enjoyment in their work. Are they working towards their bigger goal in their life? And are they doing work that they, they enjoy? And you wanna set up it so, so that it's a win for them. They're working towards their goal, and along their goal, they're also doing that. So you want to play into people's selfish interests and get them selfishly wanting to get their goal, which also helps you get to your goal. Now let's get into the fun part, the hiring process. And so here, I'm gonna walk you guys step by step through our entire hiring process. You can literally just copy this for your business. So before I jump into it, one thing I wanna say is the hiring process resembles a very similar process to acquiring clients. You start off, you create an offer, you attract, you get applications, you take calls, you qualify and sell, and you onboard and then you retain. Does that sound familiar? It's the exact same process you do for your regular business. It's almost like with the hiring part of your business, it's almost like you're building another business inside of your existing business. That's the reality of it. So that can help you simplify you and help you, you know, understand and conceptualize some of these things that we're gonna talk about here. Now, in terms of actually hiring, one of the first things I do before we actually start hiring is determine if you really need the role. This is a very common problem and I've made this mistake plenty of times before. So you have to ask yourself, is this only a temporary problem or a temporary workload? Can I make yourself or the team more efficient by eliminating or automating other tasks? The thing you have to remember is over hiring will cause you a lot of extra work and you'll lose your margins. You can over hire and then your client count goes down and now you're overextended and your business is negative in revenue. That's why you really need to be sure that you are 100% certain you're ready to hire for this role. You always wanna to try to be a little bit past the point where you actually need the role. Everybody, you're gonna to have to stretch, especially when you're a small company, you're gonna to have to stretch people a little further before you actually hire for this role, and that's kind of what you're looking for. Now, assuming you've determined you really need this role, the next thing you need to do is determine responsibilities. And of course, once again, because we're trying to focus on full-time people, unless you're just, just, just starting out for your first hire, I would part-time may be okay, but regardless, make sure it's enough for a full-time role. Because if you're hiring somebody for a full-time role and you don't even have enough work for them, you're probably gonna be wasting their money, your money, and they may not feel like they're actually helping you that much. Now, next thing that I wanna get into, number three, is to determine compensation. And so how you do this is research companies, comparable positions online, or you can even ask other people that have hired for their position. What I'm gonna do for you guys today in this video is I'm gonna, at the very end of this, I'm gonna walk you through some of the most common payment structures for different positions in marketing agencies. So I'll have that for you. But otherwise, you're gonna have to look for similar positions. And what you wanna do is you wanna try to match or beat that compensation. Have more benefits than the other companies. So to give you a couple of examples of some benefits that we have or that you could use, is remote, work from home anywhere in the world, flexible schedule and hours, paid vacation, even unlimited vacation with approval required, of course. Um, access to high-end education, masterminds, consulting, upward growth within the company, like uh, being able to level up, make higher income, whatnot. Uh, why should people want to work with you versus other companies is really what you want to think about. It's super, super important because if your offer isn't any better than anyone else, why is anyone going to work for you? So that's something very, very, very important to think about. And essentially what you're making here is your offer, like we just discussed. Now, we're going to more of like the attraction stage, which is to determine the best channels to get applicants for this role, AKA like where do they hang out? Where do these people go? And so one of the best places almost always to start is your personal network. The reason why your personal network is so much more powerful is because these per people generally would trust you a lot more and they'll probably be interested in your mission because they're following you in the first place. That one is the absolute best when it comes to hiring, assuming you have people and you have a personal network of some degree. One thing to keep in mind is as you get better and better in business, you meet more, more people, you get better network, 
that will improve over time. So don't beat yourself up too much if this isn't there yet. You will start to get this over time as you get better in business and you grow your network and whatnot. Now, the next thing that you can do is if you have employees already, you can ask your employees. That's a great one as well. And you can also have them do what I'm about to talk about here, which is post on your profile, or you can ask your employees to post on their profile, saying that you're hiring, that you're looking for a position to start to gain, gain some interest. And before you do have this, of course, you basically wanna determine applications and make the posts, but we're gonna get to that in just a second. So what you're gonna also look at is competitors or similar positions. So you can actually go into competitors and even on LinkedIn and stuff like that, you can see who works for each company. So you can make a list of your competitors and go look at some of their employees for the positions that you're hiring for. This one is another really, really great way because you know these people already have experience in the exact role you're trying to hire and they'll probably also bring you new ideas into your business. So this one is actually really powerful. This is what all the biggest tech companies in the world do. Facebook, Google, Apple, Amazon. These guys are always stealing employees from each other back and forth in whatever direction. And it's for a reason, because they know those are the best employees to go after. So competitors is a really, really, really good one to look for. Of course, that one's gonna be more manual outbound. Maybe you can hire a recruiter to help you with that, but this is a really good way to get really high quality people. Another way is to post in Facebook groups. Let's say you're hiring a media buyer, for example, for Facebook advertising. Go into a Facebook advertising group and find people there. Make a post, get people interested, send them a message, you get the idea. Think about where people, once again, hang out. People that are interested in these roles, do they go to certain websites, do they hang out in certain places, whatnot. Indeed, of course, is another good one, uh, or other job posting websites in general. Now, and with that said, Indeed is good, you'll get a high volume, but generally Indeed has lower quality than some of these other ones here. So that's why I have it lower down on the list. And then if you're looking for VA specifically, something you can consider is onlinejobs.ph or other websites that are specifically for VA jobs. Now let's get on to step number five, which is to make a job post and an application. And I'm actually gonna, didn't, gonna do you guys a big favor just to thank you for watching this video so far, because I know this is a lot of information and maybe it's even boring, but I'm making this because I wish I had this information when I was first starting hiring because I wasted well over $100,000 making the wrong hires. And I don't want you guys to do the same. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to put an example of a job post in the description for you guys that you can check out and review on your own time. So now, of course, before I get on though, is I, I want to say, don't just copy and paste that. Make sure you edit it to your position in your company. Just had to make that disclaimer. Now with your job post, it needs to attract the type of person you're looking for. If it's really generic with no personality behind it, you'll get all kinds of people that really don't care. And this is literally more important than writing ads to get new clients. You wanna treat this even more serious than you would for that. The way you attract the best talent is be the best place to work for. And you really need to sell it in your job posting. So let's cover a couple other things there, but some things that can also help spice this up are testimonial videos from other employees or pictures of your team that are really awesome or like places you've traveled. Something that shows about your company. Look at other companies' job postings for inspiration and make yours better than theirs. You need to make your job posts significantly better than others, otherwise you're not gonna get the best people applying. Now, step number six is to qualify your candidates from your job post. Now, within your application, you wanna make sure you get all necessary information so you don't waste time interviewing bad fits. And once again with this one, lucky for you guys, I will link some application examples for you down below. You know what, maybe I even need to just put the questions on a list or something so people don't enter their info, but I'll get you some kind of document so you guys can look at some uh, good qualifying questions on an application. Now, within your application, you wanna make sure you get all the necessary information so you don't waste time interviewing bad fits. So to give you some examples of that, for sales reps, you're gonna to wanna to get them to record a video selling you on why they should get the role. For media buyers, you'd want them to send examples of their work, like their portfolio, their creatives, their copywriting. How can you even know if they're good without knowing this stuff? And if you have other certain qualifications, such as previous experience, work certain hours, or they have to be full time, have those as questions so you know ahead of time and you don't waste time reaching out to people that are bad fits. And so from there, I filter the top candidates. I really like to get at least 100 applicants as much as possible and interview at least five to 10 people. So with 100 applicants, there needs to be at least 10 of them, five to 10 of them that are actually really good quality. And if you don't have that, that means you might need to go back to 
step four or step five and make your posts better, more appealing, make your company better. If you're not getting the quality of applicants you need or use a different platform, try different things there. But don't settle for a bad employee. That is one of the biggest mistakes you can make that I've made too many times in the past. One thing I do for this is you can either do this through type form or you can do it like a Google form. And then I usually make those with like Zapier or something like that. I make it go automatically into an Excel sheet. That way I can look at applicants. And what I do is I either highlight them in green, yellow, red to kind of give them a rating, or I might give them a rating one out of 10. And that way I can consistently review these applications on a daily basis. And I also may have set up some kind of email or Slack message notification through Zapier as well to notify me when I get a new application to look at. So number seven is the interview itself. And this is definitely a learning curve that you're just gonna have to get through practice. Now, with that said, I'm gonna give you some of the best tips that I have in terms of the interview here. And so the first main tip that I have for you is that I typically have two to three interviews for most positions. The first interview being the main one and the second interview typically proving their skills. So in terms of proving their skills, that might be a role play if they're a salesperson, giving them a test project to complete after the first interview, etc. So I might have them, if they're a sales rep, pitch me their previous offer or I might make a little script or give them a script of our intro call and say, okay, I want you to practice the script over the next two days and then 48 hours from now, we're gonna have another call and we're gonna role play this script. So you can see if they can actually perform under pressure. Do they actually put in the effort to do well on this test? Are they actually motivated and do they actually have the skill? Because you don't wanna hire someone. There's plenty of people out there that are really good at interviews, but they're not good at the skill itself. So you need to make sure they are actually good at the skill you're hiring for. Now, the next tip that I have is to make sure the basics are in check in the interview. You wanna ask these towards the beginning of the interview ideally because if they are not in check, you can end the interview early and not waste your time. Can they work their hours? Can they work full time? Are they okay with working in a crazy startup environment? Ask basic qualifications. Even if they answered on the application, it can be very helpful to confirm and make sure you didn't make a wrong hire just because of a simple miscommunication. Now next, one of the goals of the first interview is to determine if they are a culture fit. Like would you and your team enjoy working with them? If not, don't continue because culture fit at the end of the day is the most important even over skill. You and your team needs you enjoy working with them and they need to fit with the environment. That's how you really build a cohesive team that can build great things together. Now next on the interview is you wanna to get to know their experience. Dig deep on questions. Try as much as possible to also avoid asking stereotypical questions that you'll get you prepared answers. You want honest answers. And with that said to I will see if I can get you guys a little bit of questions that you can ask during an interview. Avoid asking questions with obvious answers like, are you good with people? Because anyone will just say yes. If it's an obvious answer, they're just gonna give you the obvious answer. So this doesn't provide you with any valuable information. And this is an interview and they wanna get the job. So they'll just say that no matter what. Instead, you wanna ask a question in a roundabout way that gets to them to give you a real answer. For example, you might ask them, what type of tasks do you enjoy the most in your work? What do you enjoy the least? Give me an example where a customer is upset about how you handle that. Make sure you ask open-ended questions that can get them to give you a real answer or ask it in a different way. A very common one that people ask is like, what are your weaknesses? And then somebody will say, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> okay, is that really a weakness? You could even ask them that to kind of get into the real thing. But you want to try to avoid getting surface level answers because they won't help you make a good decision. Another thing you want to avoid is getting happy years. You always want to be listening for red flags. And when you hear a red flag, you need to ask more questions around it to ask if it's a problem. And so with that said, I'm gonna cover some of the most common red flags for you guys. Um, in terms of those, some common red flags that I see is they don't wanna go full time because they either wanna start their own business or they're doing a bunch of stuff on the side. Um, they don't seem so enthusiastic about work. They have bad reasons for leaving previous roles, giving just surface level answers, not being real honest and open with you, working another job on the side, not showing up on time, not dressed appropriately, lying, tons of different red flags. And so you wanna look for every reason not to hire the per person. Otherwise, I can almost guarantee you it will come to bite you in the ass. And to jump back to this part here, something that's super important as well is ask questions about their skills and experience, but in a way that gets them to prove it to you, not just talk. And like I said, you can check our interview question examples to get some ideas there. And there you have it. That is the interview section of hiring people. But wait. 
We're not done there. The last step is onboarding. At this point, you've interviewed your five to 10 people and you've made your decision. You've either gone forward with one or two people and now you're ready for onboarding. Now, in terms of onboarding, some of the main first things there to remember is that the work doesn't just stop there. It's just begun. <laughs> so don't give up. It's really a crucial to retention and success. You wanna provide them with a really exciting introduction to your company. We have a slideshow for this, but you don't need to start with one. I'll have a link on this document for you guys as well. So we provide our employees with an onboarding doc that we go over with them the first two weeks. It's really important that you clearly define what success looks like. So they know if they're not hitting your KPIs, your key performance indicators, that's unacceptable. So you wanna clearly define, lay out, make this whole process as smooth as possible for this new employee so they know if they're doing a good job or not. Once again, this is the part where you're aligning the company's goals with the individual's goals and you're clearly showing them this is your path to hit your goals and this is how this is gonna help the company. So it's very crystal clear, that way they can focus on that one or two things that they need to do in order to help themselves and help the business. Now, some of the next couple of things that you can provide them with is an hour by hour schedule for their first two weeks. And just like you'd want to set expectations for your clients, you wanna set expectations for your employees. Give them every expectation you can think of. Everything that could possibly go wrong, you want them to be solved up front. Make sure everything is crystal clear. For example, something I generally almost always tell people is if there's something you don't like, you feel like this isn't the job for you anymore, I just ask that you tell me because we can we can communicate, we can have a conversation about it. If I'm ha unhappy with something you're doing, I'm gonna talk to you about it to give you an opportunity to fix it. And I would I hope to ask the same from you. And so next from there, after you've done a little bit of the onboarding, you're gonna need to train them. And typically with that, I meet with them one hour per day for two weeks some days might be more than at least weekly after that. And make sure you record your trainings. That way, if they were to quit, you have the trainings already recorded for the next person to save you time. Um, it's also very helpful to have SOPs in place. That Those are standard operating procedures, essentially step-by-step -step checklists for them to follow. So they know how to do everything before they start working. Even if they're basic, literally can just be as simple as a Loom video of you showing how to do it doesn't need to be complicated or super, super detailed. You can even teach them how to take your SOPs and make them better over time. One thing I actually do as well is essentially when I onboard and I hire someone, as I pass on those SOPs and it's like, okay, from now on, these standard operating procedures are yours now, you're the owner of these, and it's your responsibility to keep these updated so that if anyone new ever joins our team, they will have updated SOPs. So I pass on that responsibility to them. Finally, remember guys, your employees are gold. You can teach them everything you know, you can get them to do almost anything within their power as long as you empower them to learn and grow. You wanna teach them how to run the business so it can run without you. Do not be lazy on this. If you don't teach them how to make good SOPs, for example, how will they know to do them? So teach them leadership skills so they can manage the other members, teach them how to hire if it's in their role, literally teach them anything you want to take off your plate, but treat them like you would want to be treated. They're not your slave. You are here to serve them and their goals. And so with that said, let's get into frequently asked questions and then I'll get into the payment structure for each of the standard digital marketing roles. Frequently asked question number one, should I hire US or VAs? And to be honest, this just depends on the t kind of company you wanna build. Do you wanna have an office? Do you wanna charge the maximum? And, or do you wanna you know, do more volume but less cost to your clients? It just depends on the kind of company you wanna build. But I will say, because of culture and education differences, generally you will be able to scale higher and make more per employee with US-based employees. But You'll probably be more profitable with VAs, especially if you're a smaller company. So there's a give and take kind of situation there. But for me personally, I hire primarily US based or like UK, Australia, those kind of countries. Well, not really Australia because it's too far out of the time zone range, but mostly US based because it's the same time zone. But we do have some VAs. Frequently asked question number two, I'm a brand new company. What role should I hire first? Essentially to simplify this, you just wanna hire someone that's gonna replace your lowest value tasks. So that's usually gonna be a VA, a media buyer, a generalist, or someone to help you with fulfillment. So you wanna hire for the lower value tasks because you wanna maintain the high value tasks yourself ideally at first. Things like sales, the marketing, um, maybe the client success, those are generally things that you wanna try to keep to yourself until you ha don't have enough time anymore that you essentially just need to hire someone for those. And sometimes people try to take shortcuts, like they try to hire a salesperson when they haven't even sold a client yet. To be honest, guys, no good salesperson is gonna join your company 
if you haven't even done a good job selling your product yet. So don't make that mistake. Get good at selling your product first. Get good at all the skills that you need in your company, and then you can hire out from there. Now, finally, let's get into the question everybody wants to know, how much should I pay? And so, of course, I want to make a disclaimer here. Make sure you check the current job market first. This will definitely change over time. And so, first off, I would say a general VA should be anywhere from $750 to $2,000 a month, usually. And when I say virtual assistant, VA, same thing. It could also be executive assistant, same kind of thing. Generally, these people are from the Philippines, Colombia, other countries like those that have a better currency exchange where they can get more for their money in their country, essentially. And so that's why you're able to have them be paid a little bit less. Now, the next rule in terms of media buyer, typically for media buyers, we would look at percentage of each client or a salary. Percentage of each client only if they're like part-time usually, or you just don't have the funds or enough clients yet to support that. And in certain terms of the percentage, it could be anywhere from 10 to 33% of the client's monthly retainer, or like 300 to $500 a month per client, or it could be a monthly salary. So if it's a salary um, and they're full-time, I would say $4,000 or more. That can vary a lot depending on their skill set, but generally that's like kind of the starting point. And if you're looking at VA media buyers, like from some of those countries I just mentioned, you're probably gonna be looking at somewhere $1,500 to $3,000 a month. The reason it's gonna cost more than a general VA is because they have a specific skill set like Facebook advertising or Google advertising or YouTube advertising that makes them more valuable and more rare. And so that's why it's a little bit more. Now, in terms of the next main role, which is client success manager, what you're gonna be looking at pay there is usually four to $6,000 a month plus commission on referrals and or upsells. Um, you don't necessarily have to do commission on referrals or upsells, but I would strongly recommend it. If you want really, really, really good client success managers, you want to ideally allow their income to be 100K plus. And obviously that'd be done through the commission on referrals and upsells, um, but a 72,000 base is very solid for a client success manager. And if you feel like these numbers are crazy off or you disagree, feel free to leave them down in the comments below because I'd be interested to see what you guys have to say. But generally for my company and working with other agencies, this is typically what I see. Now, in terms of sales reps, this is a huge one and very, very important you get this one right. Ideally for sales reps, it's fully commission-based. Um, you have to determine this commission structure for your company and you must have the ability to make more than 100, they must have the ability to make more than $100,000 a year. Unless for some weird reason, it's a low skill sale, it's like really easy to sell and you could teach almost anyone how to sell it. But generally, sales reps, they need to easily have the ability to make more than 100K a year if you want to have somebody that's actually good. So common mis commission structures for sales reps, for agencies is 10 to 20% of the first sale. This also works for coaching as well. 25 to 50% of the first month if it's a retainer. 20% first month, 10% for five months after that. Uh, that also kind of incentivizes them to <clears throat> sell better quality clients, sell agreements and sell them better on the expectations. So I really like that one. And this last one here is what we personally use. And sorry if I misspoke on this one, it's actually 20, 10 to 20% of a one-time sale. And finally, I recommend almost always hiring two sales reps at the same time. So they have a little bit of friendly competition. But and of course, forward to that, you have to have enough opportunity for them to hit their income goals. And there you have it guys, that's how you hire for a digital marketing agency or similar online business. Hope this video helped you guys out. If you enjoyed and you want more content like this, make sure to leave me some likes and comments below. Otherwise, I may not be motivated to make more content like this because it definitely takes a lot of work. But regardless, if you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe and let me know if you enjoyed it or not. Thank you so much, guys. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.